Hello, hello, Lord Xenon here with Violet Willow, and we are now going to be playing the Thousand Maws of Todorak. This is a level 24 dungeon. It sinks to level 27 and is unlocked as part of the main story. It Dunge the dungeons still haven't gotten particularly difficult at this point of the game, but it's stepping things up a little bit. Uh, poison is a big thing in this dungeon, so healers need to be on the lookout for that. Other than that, this is a fairly basic dungeon. Now, it is a little confusing in terms of its layout. Uh, this is actually, from what I'm given to understand, a holdover from the old 1.0 which you know the history of this game, you know, uh, failed miserably. But this, uh, this dungeon was apparently a very open-ended, try to find as many things as you can within the time limit sort of dungeon. So this dungeon, uh, as it remains in this version, is still kind of labyrinthine. There are definitely multiple ways to get through it, and you most certainly don't need to explore everything. A lot of what you do in here really depends on the route that the tank occurs. Uh, these, these things like the water stain notes are just for flavor, don't worry about them. But the Magitech Tech Photo Cells are things you definitely need. Every boss chamber in this dungeon requires four such cells to pass. Oh, dear. Okay, I just looked at the party layout. Uh, we have a... We have me, playing as an Arcanist. We have a Summoner, and a Scholar. So... All the dots. <laughs> um, all the dots. <laughs> I see our summoner friend has uh, has a glamour pet. Ruby Carbuncle isn't actually a pet in this game, but you can glamour your pet to look like Ruby Carbuncle. Ruby Carbuncle. <laughs> As you can see, when you're looking at these enemies, most of them have three sets of Bio or Miasma and Bio 2. And as I mentioned at the end of the last video, now that I am uh, at level 26, you get access to Bio 2, which replaces Bio. <laughs> More dots. Cell 3 is up in front of us there. Again, not, you know, not much in the way of new abilities in this dungeon, just upgraded versions of existing abilities. So... Uh, so there's really not much more to comment on in terms of what strategies you should be employing. It's pretty much exactly... Uh, pretty much exactly what you're doing uh, in all the other dungeons up to this point.
Alright, we need a fourth photo cell. Fortunately, it's right here! Where are we going? Alright, uh, yeah, the tank has stated that he's uh, getting back into the game. And so obviously he doesn't know that uh, he's going around in circles. Again, this dungeon is a labyrinth if you don't, if you, if you don't know the way around. But that's alright, that gives us another photocell. Which actually gives us a head start on the next uh, area. So it's really not a bad thing that we did a little bit of backtracking. See, there are actually two paths into this chamber here. But the, but if you if you do like we did and go back, you actually get a, an extra photo cell. Which means it's one less photo cell you need in the next section of the dungeon. This boss is very simple. Just another simple tank and spank, but the biggest problem with this guy is he will poison his target. And he's gonna put a lot of poison on his main target. So. The healer just needs to make sure that the poison doesn't get out of control and kill the tank. But, uh, really, again, not a big issue. And this is actually something I could use on a... Uh, on a tank character, so I'll go ahead and pull our roll on that. Now, in this next section, a lot of the, uh... Sorry, lost track there. In this next section, a lot of the photocells are going to be generated by defeating enemies, rather than just finding them on the walls. Case in point. But again, just like in the last section, we need four photocells before we can pass the next area. But also like the last area, there are multiple ways to get or to get around to the boss chamber. So the key is to get around to the boss chamber and have the required number of photo cells. And since we're ahead, since we went back and got an extra, th this should not be an issue at all. I believe there's at least one, maybe two more photo cells in this chamber. Now these Warden Whip enemies inflict poison. If you're looking at our party list, you'll see three poison icons next to the tank. Or you did, but they all got here and dropped off. Alright, there's another photo cell. Picking it up. Now we just need one more. Mrs. Bane. <laughs> yeah. And uh, when, when we clear this dungeon, uh, I guarantee we're going to be at 30 by the time we clear this dungeon. And I'm going to get Bane. And I'll have it by the next time I play the next dungeon. So you'll know why this summoner, Mrs. Bane, 
when I show you what it does. It really is one of the great bread and butter spells of the, uh, uh, well, I mean, scholars even use it, of the scholar and, uh, ah! scholar and summoner are personal. Yeah, now in some of these rooms you'll notice a sticky web shows up. That kind of blocks people's progress. It can be really bad if it cuts off certain members of the party from each other. Okay, we have our four photo cells. This is a good thing. Because if you look up there, there's another terminal. Summoner friend already got that, but ooh ooh. All right, so for this last section, try to keep up with the party. Don't do what I did; get caught up behind. That green goo does not actually hurt you, it nearly slows you down. Kill the enemies as you encounter them. Most importantly, try to attack those fleshy pods. Because if you get near them, they'll explode and poison everybody that is in range. Typically, the tank will uh, use a range, but they're basically their range of full attack. But you can also use uh, use your bio on it for a nice quick cast. Any ranged attack will do, and you'll, you just want to kill them before you get into range. Of them. The trick is, some of them you don't see till you there are basically hiding right around corners. And you won't see them until you're practically right on top of them.
another problem with this dungeon, as you, I'm sure you've noticed, is it's all very close quarters. And therefore, if you're like me and like to zoom your camera out considerably, it can be really hard to get a good camera angle. Alright, now we're ah. We're gonna see if the tank does this, but we're getting to the point up here. You want to not go forward, you instead want to turn and come right up here the way the healer is going. But the tank didn't realize that. Again, the tank isn't used to this dungeon, and that's perfectly alright. And if, you don't, if you're not used to that dungeon, you will not know that really it's best to just turn right there. Because this is a dead end. Of course, the best way to know where to go in this dungeon is to look at your mini-map. Waiting for everybody to roll... ...on that gear so that I can get my upgraded rope. Haha! <laughs> Remember what I said about, uh those fleshy pods hiding around corners. Alright, we are almost at the end of the dungeon now. Once again, Carby gets stuck behind the wall. Oh, this time, uh, both Carbies got stuck behind the wall, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that open. So that both I and the Summoner can have our pets. Based on the uh, Carbuncle's attacks, uh, the Ruby Carbuncle, it's probably a Garuda Eggie. That's, uh, glamoured to look like a Ruby Carbuncle. Uh, my main, when I play as a Summoner, uh, has the exact same configuration, so uh, it's not uncommon. Because Ruby Carbuncle is a pet that you cannot actually get in this game. And so, so but a lot of people just like the look of it. I, I am one of those people. Uh, so... Alright, I am going to skip this introduction, as there's actually two different introductions to this boss. The first one, the one that occurs for the first time that you that you enter is basically a story mode cutscene that is considerably longer, and again, for the sake of the party, I don't want to be stuck in that. Then every time you face this boss after that, you get a more generic boss introduction cutscene. Look at our pets and way back there, but they are in the arena. Alright. Do kill the ads in this uh, fight. They really give they can really give the tank a hard time. Now, the biggest thing to look forward to with this boss is that eventually its tail is going to be exposed. Immediately target the tail. and do as much damage to it as you can. And, in case you're wondering if you should be staying out of that green stuff, yes. Absolutely yes. Alright, once you've killed the tail, the boss is weakened considerably. And at this point, it's probably better if you just push him to the end. Boss is down. Yay. And I got an achievement. And I'm gonna put the commendation in. And nobody opened the treasure coffer. 
and I'll roll on that. And I got it. And the dungeon's over, and I got two commendations, two commendations as a, as an arcanist slash summoner. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, that was a nice clean run of Totem Rock. Oh, and there's going to be some cutscene going on. It's lots and lots of story story, and it's a very important story here, too. I believe that in the course of that, I got to level 30, and that means that I get a, uh, I get a job upgrade. I, up, now I get to upgrade from Arcanist to Summoner. I think I'm going to give you a, a special video on upgrading the Summoner, and, and just because of the new abilities you get, how the class is reconfigured, and then we will, uh, I'll, I'll make that a bonus video, and then we will go from there into the next dungeon when I unlock it. So until then, have a wonderful day, and I hope you enjoyed the video.